Hey, good afternoon, everybody. My name is Janet Black, AIFD, the American Institute of Floral Designers. I'd like to welcome you to my program today. Normally, we would be at the Create Theater, but today I am have the great pleasure to invite you to my home in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. You're in my backyard. We're very close and comfortable here, so come on, let's get going. Grab that cup of coffee, and I'm gonna show you tips and exciting things that will make our plants pop today with color. So let's get started on how a vase or a container can help us with our emotions. Color is emotional. I'm gonna start out with this particular container. It's elegant, it's clean, and it's refreshing. It gives you a mood of elegance. Our anthurium is bright red. Red, yellow, and blue are our three main colors in the color wheel. The color wheel is made up of 12 individual colors. So let's talk about red. Red can be passionate and emotional and bring that wonderful thought of love. Also, we have this container, and look at how so easily we can see even more passion because the red of the bromeliad and the container being red gives us a lot more passion and drama. So it depends on what you want your plant or your emotion to be. We also have this plant, and this plant brings in the yellow, one of the other colors of our main colors on the uh, color wheel. Yellow is very important this year because it's the color of the year, and yellow represents hope. In this vermilion, I can see that from yellow to red, you make orange. Orange is a secondary color. But look at how well it works. Another interesting vessel that you can use is glass. This glass container on the end is huge with a lot of drama. I'm focusing on the plant, the red plant, and I'm also binded the root ball with some moss, red moss again, because our color is red. If we continue red, throughout our design, it's called a monochromatic colorway. I've also added stones at the base just for a little bit of drainage. The colors of these plants are absolutely stunning. Well, now that we're into zooming quite a bit, I am always a nosy parker because I like to see what's in my colleagues' homes or my friends. I want to see how they set up their decor in the background. Usually, I usually see them with different books. Of course, today we're going to talk about colors, so this would be the book that I would have out on my Zoom presentation. But I think it's important we can market Zoom. So let's think about marketing it in a special way. I have a clear glass vase that I'm gonna show you a very simple recipe. Normally those Zoom meetings, we, they, we have a very small space. So this particular vase is very rectangular, clean lines, and very simple. You can't go wrong with a clear glass vase. I have small little white stones that I'm going to make a base. And I'm going to pat it down nice and even because this is going to be our very first layer in our design. Get it nice and packed. The next layer we're going to use is a little bit larger stone in different earth tones 
using the black, the brown, the beige, which is all very popular right now in our home decor. So it really will go with anything that you might have in your home. Again, I'll tap this down so it's nice and firm. And lastly, I'm going to take the beautiful Talancia with the lavender tips and I'm going to put them right along the top of this container, pressing them down a little bit so they have stability and it's adding lots of dynamic texture to this design. And there you go, voila. We have our first design that could be used in your next Zoom program. So let's try to market Zoom ideas. I have another idea for Zoom that might work well too. Look at the beautiful color of this container, which sets off the succulents. Lavender is the color of red and blue together. I have a Smitonona sticks that come in any color at all, but I decided to go again monochromatic, keeping in the same color harmony. So I'm going to just twist and turn these very simply and I'm going to insert them around the edge of the container and I'm going to create some more volume to this arrangement. Sticking it in about an inch, twisting and turning, and the fun part about this is that it doesn't matter how you do it or how it goes, just as long as we're keeping it in the space that we've provided with the container. We're adding a little bit of height, and in between the sticks, you can see the negative space, which makes us think of a lot of interest. Interest is important in our design and it keeps our viewer, our, our customer engaged. And that's what we want to do. We want to engage our customer. There we go. And I'm just separating these so we create a little bit more negative space. And we've just added a whole new dimension to a very simple vase that again could be used in that Zoom program. Now, I love that. I think it's absolutely great, but let's just bump it up a notch, a cloche. Now this cloche adds more drama to our arrangement, as you can see, and it makes it even more elevated. Because this cloche doesn't have a hole for moisture to come in and out, it's important when you're using this that you also tell your customer to use a little bit of spray to keep our lovely plants happy. So I'm just going to slide this over and bring back this arrangement so that you can see how this could be a really interesting pairing between these two arrangements. So think about that for your next Zoom program or to market it in your shop for another new idea to inspire you. The next arrangement that I would like to create for you is again, look at the container with the beautiful color. Your sticks here. I have paired two gorgeous Philanopsis orchids from Silver Vase, and I've put them in this yellow 
green container that really makes your eye pop. I want to take this fantastic bind wire, which is by Oasis, and this is one of my absolute favorite things to use. You can use it to secure almost anything. But I want to bump up this arrangement a little bit, and I'm going to start out by securing the placement of our orchids with just sticks that I've gotten from my garden. And I'm going to intertwine them around and through the orchid stems. Again, we're creating negative space within the design. And once I start to get a few more in here, then we'll secure them even better. So I'm going to take my bind wire and I'm gonna very simply just twist it very gently around the stem and the stick of the orchid. I'm going to twist it and cut it so that you don't see it because I don't want people to see my mechanics and how I did this. So it looks like it's all very natural. So I'll just go along and do this for quite a few of these. This bind wire is also a wire wrapped with paper so that it doesn't matter if it shows because the wire has already been concealed by the paper. So I'm going to just turn this around so that you can see how we've started to create the definition again of fabulous negative space. And this is going to elevate your design Also gives quite a modern look, I think, and sleek lines. But you can see we're really starting to build fabulous defin definition in this design, and it helps with the stability of the plant, plant as well. turning it around so that you see your arrangement in the from the front and also from the back it's very important that you make sure that the back is ex as, as exciting as the front also saved a couple of the sticks so that I'll have them for the base because you want your eye to extend from the top as well as the bottom. But I've also used the uh, plastic containers that the orchids have come in so I want to make sure that I'm covering that up and camouflaging my mechanics found this fabulous moss by Bella Moss that adds the definition of the color of this container. And I'm taking the moss and I'm dragging it from the front to the back so that your eye at the base of the container will move all the way from the back to the front. Also want to add black. Black is the color of all the colors and it adds drama 
And I love these big egg rocks. I think they're so clean line and exciting and also will cover up your mechanics and making more drama in your arrangement. So now we have the bright green moss as well as the black stones and I just want to make sure that I fill absolutely everything in. So I'm also going to add some of the Spanish moss which adds the light to the dark and adds another texture at the base. As you can see, we're starting to build some exciting interest at the base and it's completely okay to see those unusual roots of the orchids extending outside the vase and again adding more drama to your arrangement. So there you go. I think that looks dynamite. Again we'll add some of these sticks from the base to the top so that your eye is drawn from top to bottom with these beautiful orchids. And now you can see how we've just elevated it just a little bit with very simple mechanics. There we go. All right. So now we're going to clean up my counter here. And we're going to move on and I'm going to show you <coughs> an arrangement that I've created. Layering. We layer with our clothing. We also layer with our floral arranging. You can see the gorgeous blooms of the orchids. Again, in that yellow color, which is the color of the year, which is the color of hope. I've then taken a gray container. Again, it's a container that um, is sleek lines and very shiny. So we have a wreath that I've incorporated in the center to hold up the beautiful blooms of the orchids and add stability. So I have rough to smooth in this container by the layering. Another accent that I added was the lucite sticks that hold up the orchids. Again, the plain green sticks are lovely, but this helps move your eye up the design and also is influenced by the sleek line of the container at the base. Air plants have been used in the center to add the drama and again more texture. If you peek through the wreath that is all involved with nature of course and all of the wood theme you can see the succulents are nestled in there and planted. Another interesting thing that we can do to upgrade this arrangement is also adding a little more color and drama with some additional air plants. And what's nice is I have this glue from Oasis that I can just glue a plant anywhere. And I think we'll just glue him right in here, adding stability so that you 
just nestled in there. We'll add another one because I think it's important to have twos or threes and that way you have more volume with your plants. Just tuck it in there. So now you can see the color of the bright pink of the air plants associated with the bright pink of the center of the orchid blooms. I just want to add a little bit more stability to my orchids. And now, because we have the wreath that's all about nature, I want to include this stick which I've taken the leaves off. This is actually my pigeon plum tree in my yard. And again, I'm adding negative space. So you can see how beautiful the negative space and all the interest brings your eye through the arrangement. I hope you've enjoyed my presentation today. I've enjoyed being with you even though it was in my backyard. I'd like to thank Silver Vase, Central Florida Fern, Russell's, and also Plants and Design for being my fabulous sponsors and showing us color. So thanks a lot, and I appreciate having you in my backyard. And for me, and also AIFD, come join us for more educational programs at AIFD dot org.